Hello, welcome to Tea with Molly. We are here today with my dear friend Shawande Tichawana, mm -hmm. and he is the founder and CEO of Raceman Telepictures. He's also an amazing actor, filmmaker, uh, community service advocate, so many things on so many levels, and I'm just so pleased to have you here with us today to talk about... Nice to be here, thanks. ...to talk about your passion and your purpose. So. You know, I, I'm fascinated about the history of why filmmaking. Um, filmmaking, believe it or not, was a, a, a cop out for me huh. because I always, I always had a passion for acting. And when I was an undergrad at Howard University, um, I said, "Okay, what's going to be the closest?" Thing to doing what I want to do because acting I couldn't at that time I couldn't grasp the concept of no matter how good you were it didn't guarantee you work and you know that 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 scared in fact when I when, when I was a, a freshman at Howard I actually was an accounting major believe it or not so I was I, I was in the school of business for my freshman and sophomore year and changed my major. I, it just wasn't for me. You know, I was there on an academic scholarship and it just, you know, I was like flunking out of college and uh, it just wasn't a good fit. Well, do you think that also was because you knew that there was no excitement around it, that it wasn't really it just attached didn't speak to who you to were? Mm -hmm. I, the, the, quite honestly, the reason I picked accounting was because I got an A in it in high school. Okay. I really didn't put a lot of thought into okay. what I wanted to do for a living. Um, but I always loved acting. Um, and I said, well, what's the closest thing that would get me to that and would provide security? And so I decided to major in broadcast production. And I minored in drama. You know, once I switched out of the school of business. So, um, my, my sophomore year, I lost my scholarship. It was a full academic scholarship. Um, I got it back, back that next year, because, um, because it was a national scholarship. Um, you were able to, to get it if your grades were, you know, if you, if you, you know, got the required at GPA. And, you know, I was, I really got into production. I really liked the, uh, the, the elements of what, what brings the production together. I liked learning about it, so I got my scholarship back. Um, I liked bringing um, a technical aspect to my passion. But the one thing I would recommend to anyone listening to this, this podcast, you know, don't get so consumed with your plan B. <laughs> follow your passion and do it because if you don't follow your passion, what will happen is years will go by, that passion is not going anywhere. What you love to do is not going anywhere. You're gonna find your way back to it anyway. So it's just, you know, you can take the direct route or you can take the more secure, circuitous route like I did and you know, it'll 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 be years after you, you know, until you follow your passion again. But uh, that was you know that was how I got my start okay. in the business. You know, now let's yeah. go back to before you went to school and you decided to study broadcast and production and then mm -hmm. minor in drama. Mm -hmm. um, how did you know? Like, do you remember a time when you knew that acting was your thing? That it was Absolutely. it was your passion and, and something you wanted to become your craft. When was share that moment with us? Um, when when I was in the when I was in in um, school communications minoring in drama, I had the good fortune to take a class called beginning directing mm -hmm. with um, a teacher who was a veteran in the business. Her name was Vera Katz, and people who especially Howard University alums who are actors know very, very cash. She's, she's a legend. She had the foresight to every Friday 
bring a professional from the industry to speak to us. So um, through that class, I met uh, Cap Calloway. I met uh, Debbie Allen, who's also a Howard alum and was producer of the show A Different World. Um, but the person who impressed me the most was Richard Wesley. Richard Wesley is a playwright who, whose play uh, we would dissect in, in um, beginning directing. Okay. And I was really just, I'd never heard of him before, but his work spoke volumes. And he came and spoke, and at the end of his presentation, he said, I'll give you my contact, mm -hmm. reach out to me. And, and I did. And I you called him. Did. Yeah, I called him. He was he, he lived in New Jersey, so I called him, and he said, "Wow, I've given I don't know how countless lectures and told people to reach out to me. Do you realize that you're the first person who did it?" And I was like, "Really?" <laughs> so I went to visit him, and he forgot that we had set the appointment. And I was heartbroken. I was knocking on his door and no one answered. And so I waited, I drove from Washington, D.C. to uh, Montclair, New Jersey, and knocked on this man's door. No one was home. And luckily, because I didn't have anywhere to go, so luckily um, he showed up about 10, 15 minutes later. Wow. And he looked at me like, were we supposed to meet today? And I was like, oh man, he's like, that's all right, come and hop in the car. So I went, went in the car with him, and I got, to, I got a first-hand experience with the business. Um, he, was, he had written a script, and he was going over it with his producer, and he was just putting X's through a script, and I was like, how can you do that to your, you know, because I'm, your script is your baby. And it's like, how can you do this to your baby? And um, I got a first-hand first experience to the business like that. And later we spoke and talked about, like, well, I, he, he gave an honest assessment of the work I had done as a student, which wasn't that good. And, um, and he was the first person that sat me down, was honest with me and said, okay, I see the potential here, but you need to improve X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And because it was coming from this man who wrote The Mighty Gents, which was the stage play that launched uh, Morgan Freeman's career, you know, um, it meant a lot. His words meant a lot to me. And we've become friends over the years, and he still remains remains my mentor to this day. He also wrote the screenplay for Uptown Saturday Night and Let's Do It Again. So, you know, these and, and these films starred Ozzie Davis and Bill Cosby and Harry Belafonte, all of these people who were not only actors but were actors. I coined a, a, a term back in the 90s called actorists for people who, you know, advocated for their, you know, whatever cause um, and used their celebrity to further the cause. Um, so learning from the man who wrote the screenplay for these brilliant actors and actresses uh, has left an indelible mark on my career as a filmmaker and an actor. So that's what that's great. inspired me. So we talked about your first true experience of being enlightened by the opportunity to act, being exposed to um, who I would consider your mentor, mm -hmm. your first true mentor in the acting realm. So with that in mind, what does mentorship mean to you today? How has that experience and how it shaped you um, allowed you to do the same for others? Um, mentorship is you know, very important to me because I wouldn't have made it in my career without the guidance of mentors. Um, I mentioned earlier Richard Wesley as a mentor. And what's interesting is that um, I met him my senior year. So I met him in, I think, like April 
or maybe, yeah, late April. Um, went to his house in May, graduated. Um, shortly after I graduated, okay. I graduated on my birthday. It was just a magical time for me. And a month later, I worked with Richard's mentor. It's my first job in the industry, and that's with Ozzie Davis and Ruby D. They had a production company called uh, Emily Two Productions, where they had a slate of of uh, films that covered just all different types of minorities. Uh, so the elderly, of course, African Americans, and it was a variety of formats: drama, comedy, um, you know, historical fiction, and they were looking for production assistants. And because I was you know, very active in the school communications, um, I, I worked uh, as, a, as a student intern at the, the TV station where they actually had their offices during this, this production. You know, I, was, I was a production assistant for them. And Asi always made a conscious effort to give back. So I'm watching these these men, these veterans, these celebrities, um, always taking the time out to help someone brand new to the business. And that was the role model for me. So when I started my company, you know, I reached back to uh, Howard University grads and had them work not only as uh, production assistants, but also as continuity, so that they could be up close and personal with the actors and the production uh, and work side by side to watch me and my process as a director. Wow. Um, and I've also done that outside of uh, production okay. um, through my fraternity. You know, I had a program called Know Your History, which taught the um, achievements of Africans and African Amer Americans not only in this country, but worldwide, that wasn't taught in the school system. Awesome. So, so I've, I've, there's always been an element of giving back and providing guidance. What does that do for you? Um, actually, it grounds me, mm -hmm. because it, just before this interview, I, I had a, a student to reach out to me through, through LinkedIn, okay. and he was, he reminded me of me when I was his age and what he wants to act. And I told him, look, you know, if that's your passion, follow your passion. Once again, don't get consumed in plan B because he wanted to, he wants to, you know, to be an entrepreneur, which is fine, but he wants to use that to get in roles. And, you know, getting roles is all about being prepared, auditioning, learning monologues, etc. And if acting is your passion, you know, you shortchange yourself. Right. There's a tremendous amount of time so, and effort right. to really uh, hone in on your craft and study exactly. it. And when, when you run a business, it's really difficult to, have to run a business as an entrepreneur and then do something that innately is inside of you that's your true passion on the side. Somehow there's always going to be conflict. So. If you can blend the two, great, but it's also very hard. As you've, as, very as you've lived through this, you've kind of gone into filmmaking, which we'll get into a little bit more of, mm -hmm. um, but deep down in your soul, it's always been acting as your, your true north, right? Yeah. That was, that's always been your true north. So that's great. A mentorship is really important. And I think for those that are watching who are creatives or who are really looking to go into filmmaking or to really pursue your acting career, um, it's not easy. And yet at the same time, as you mentioned, if it's inside of you, ingrained in you, it will never go away. So and you have to... You're going to find your way back to it. Right. Just like you have, right? Yeah. Okay, so tell me more about uh, Race Man Telepictures. Mm -hmm. How did you come up with that name? And uh, what does it stand for? What does the company represent in the world of filmmaking and... Okay. Um, well, Race Man Telepictures was founded in, in March of 2000. Um, I had written a script called Talking Shop, and it was a slice of life piece uh, about a barbershop. And the barbershops are culturally important. They're a mainstay in the African American community. Um, Race Man Telepictures got its name from 
um, my concept of what I wanted to do with this kind of company. Okay. Um, all throughout the history of African Americans, uh, there were men who advocated for the race, and in the you know in, at, at, at the turn of the 20th century, these men were called race men. So people like W. E. B. Du Bois, um, who was you know, critical in the founding of the NAACP, um, and 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 his I don't want to say adversary, but Booker T. Washington, who had a different you know had a, a different approach on the direction that African Americans uh, were going. They were all racist. Frederick Douglass, they were race men. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, these were race men. And um, I love that. Name. I wanted to tell the, I, I, and I, I wanted to tell the story of our people that doesn't get the uh, exposure in Hollywood that I think it should um, through my company. Okay. So, so race man, and then Telepictures actually is a play on um, Jay Z's Rockefeller. Okay. Record. Okay. So I kind of like that Rockefeller because it, it's a double entendre, and I said, "Well, Telepictures will be my play on." on, on, on like and that. so, I, so I named my, my company Race Man Tell T E L L dash A dash Pictures. So Race Man Telepictures just had a ring. Okay. And you know the. The, the focus is to make people laugh in there, you know, because I think that, um, you know, in telling our story, we need to address certain issues that, that separate us, because really, it's, it's all a farce, you know? I mean, we're more alike than different. So my films, you know, tend to expose you know the perceived differences and then show how we're alike and hopefully it'll unite us. Mm -hmm. Has that evolved from focusing on African-American issues into a broader you know ethnicity and cultural understanding? Actually it has. And, and, and is it that just through your um, films or is it also through your writing because I know that you have written screenplays and continue to do so and you've won some awards so congratulations um, this is Amanda now <laughs> so um, tell us about that how has over time the mission for your organization evolved in terms of who your demographics are when I started race man telepictures um, initially it was to tell the stories um, the multiple stories of African Americans um, it's now evolved into telling the story of people of color and you know the next step will be the next step in the evolution will be just telling the story of people but I want to focus primarily on African Americans and people of color because those stories get ignored here now you know people of color are the majority population worldwide so um, it's just you know the the, the next evolution as just as a business you know to tell other people other people's stories you know, right. so well I also want to highlight you know race Mantella pictures we know what the name stands for the mm -hmm. symbolism behind it the philosophy and mm -hmm. and the motto of the, the organization what type of work do you do um, when you're not acting under race Mantella pictures um, under Race Man Telepictures, you know, it's, wow, it's a, that, that's a loaded question because I do so much. Um, Give I us some in, examples. I, I, I work in special needs, giving back in special needs because I have a child with, with Down Syndrome. Um, the cutest child in the that, whole wide world. <laughs> I love that child. He will, he, he'll, he'll be glad to hear that. Um, you know, I, I still, I still work with like aspiring filmmakers. Uh, in fact, at uh, Sankofa Bookstores, which is uh, owned by Haile Garima, who's an internationally acclaimed award-winning Ethiopian filmmaker and one of my teachers at Howard, um, I had a screening uh, 
a couple of weeks ago of uh, Gabriella Watson, who is um, a Brazilian filmmaker of Afro-Peruvian descent, right. who did a documentary on racism in Brazil. And um, she's, begin she, she's beginning uh, her master's at Temple uh, at the start of this new school year, this 2013 school year. So I put her in touch with one of my producers. So I like to connect people. Um, that's another passion of mine. Uh, when I see that there are similarities that both parties can benefit from, um, you know, I, I, I do that almost second nature. You know, that, that's, in a way, that's how, that's what we have in common. And that's how we connect and that's how we get along so well. Because we both see that need, you know. We like placing people um, with other people who can, you know, help them thrive, help them grow, um, not only in their profession, but as an individual. Shawanda, I want the world, who everyone who's watching, to know that it is possible to be successful, and you've de we define our own success, of course, to be successful and to really um, choose your passion and know that it's worth it. And so I want to talk a little bit about the movies that you've actually worked on yourselves, that you've produced and directed, um, how they've done some of the accolades, and also your acting career, that you're actually living it, you're doing it. So share with us what you've been involved in, what projects you've been involved in. So start with your existing films, the ones that you've produced yourselves. Okay, um, well, as I mentioned, when I started my company in, in 2000, um, I had written a short, short film called Talking Shop, and that film, um, a lot happened in, in the year 2000 because I shot that film in like a record of like three days. Huh? Is and that how you shoot all your films? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, because um, that happens. I'm, I'm sorry. Too. I'm, I'm, I'm confusing it. Okay. I actually shot. The new N word in three Yes, days. I was like, I wow. shot talking shop in one day. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I wow. shot that in one day with um, with 2,400 feet of film. So pretty much everything we shot we used. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Every frame of footage we shot we used, and and um, I shot that in June, I believe. I shot it on a Monday because, I mean. Barber shops are closed on Monday, okay. and the theaters are dark. So that mm -hmm. means I had, I had my location available, and I had my actors available. <laughs> so, um, you know, the, later on that year, uh, my son was born in November. In December, I received the uh, the Mayor's Art Award for Outstanding Emerging Artist wow. for my film Talking Shop. That's great. So. Um, you know, that was like the first accolade for the company. Um, now, fast forward to uh, the new N-word 10 years later. Um, similar thing happened. Uh, I wrote the script and I wrote it based on a story that a friend of mine told me in a car ride home uh, about this, you know, dispute between these two employees at a, at a major electric company here in the area. And um, at first I wasn't going to do it, but then I decided, you know, I haven't done a short in a while, Let, wh why not? And I just like flippantly submitted it to the Larry Neal Writers Awards. And lo and behold, got a notice that it was, that it was nominated. And so I went to the award ceremony with like absolutely zero expectations. Mm -hmm and wound up winning that award. That's fantastic. Um, and it was a cash prize. I used that because I was going to shoot the film anyway. I used that to, to pay my actors. And we shot in three days. And, you know, I got, it was a mix of professional actors and brand new actors. Mm -hmm. You know, I even cast you in that. <laughs> and, Very um, small part, but I'm so <laughs> grateful. And, um, and I mean, it was just one of the the, the fastest uh, projects from conception to post production that I've ever worked on. Um, 
and with my work as an actor in between, uh, I acted in this film in between 2000 and 2010. Oh, and I before you in, go into that though, okay. how many awards and nominations did you get for oh. the new N-word? Oh, wow. Um, well, the Larry Neal Writers Award, um, and when the film was completed, uh, I was nominated for um, the African Movie, African Movie Academy um, Best Diaspora Short Film. That's great. I didn't win it, but I'll That's tell so you, great. it was just as good as winning because it was an all-expense paid trip to Nigeria where the award ceremony was held. It was my first time to the motherland. and. I mean, it was just a wonderful experience because I got to meet other filmmakers, got to meet the next generation of filmmakers, and and you know they were all they they were all at the top of their game because they were all nominated, wow. and uh, just the quality and body of work really just changed my entire perspective about about you know this business and everything, and how there's a market that's just hungry for. Films by people of color. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. now you're acting. I cut you off yeah, earlier, acting. but you're acting. Okay. All of the the productions that you've been involved in as an actor. Oh. Maybe not all. Of time them. for all of them, <laughs> but I I, I will I, I'll. How about this year? Okay. Okay. So uh, this this well in in 2012 to 2013, um, when I decided to focus my attention on acting more seriously. Um, I was very fortunate to get, you know, a couple of, uh, of, of roles of varying types. Um, one thing that uh, I'm, I'm happy about is I, I got a lead role in the TV series Investigation Discoveries, Who the Bleep Did I Marry? My wife is a little less happy about the role because it was an abusive uh, husband, abusive spouse. But it gave me an opportunity to just kind of show my acting chops, okay. you know, and to play a character that's just totally opposite of me. I hope so. so. <laughs> right, the right. So, um, so, and then shortly after that, I, I landed like some background work uh, on the TV series House of Cards, which is you know now the number one. It's yes. funny, it's the number one series on television that's not on television, yes. but it's a great series. I watch it, I love it. Of, yeah, it stars Kevin Spacey. Yeah. So I'm in the pilot episode of that. Um, uh, I also got some background work on Veep, uh, HBO show starring Julia Lewis Dreyfus. Um, and now uh, my career is, you know, taking um, a different turn. I'm, you know, I'm looking at doing more lead work and supporting work as an actor, so that's in development. Uh, there's one, there, there's one uh, show that's a recreation, another recreation show called Celebrity Crime Files on TV One, and they do the story on the tragic, the, the tragedies of, uh, of uh, African-American celebrities mainly. And the story of McFadden and Whitehead, uh, John Whitehead who was, you know, who was you know, murdered back in 2006, McFadden and Whitehead, I get to play G. McFadden. Okay. And um, John, you know, J John Whitehead, who was murdered, his murder had a devastating effect on G. McFadden. Um, they, they had one big hit as a, as a performing duo. Ain't no stopping us now. Mm -hmm. And I, so I got to play an R&B artist that I admire. So I, I, I dug that. Uh, but they were a great songwriting duo. Like they wrote hits for the OJs. Um, they wrote Backstabbers. Uh, smile in your face all the time when you take your place, the Backstabbers. So you and get to sing too? Wrote, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah you but you sing? don't hear it. Oh. <laughs> um, the, um, they also wrote the hit for Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes when Teddy Pendergrass was the lead singer, Wake Up Everybody. So these, you know, just getting a chance to just kind of, you know, introducing them back into the public eye 
was really cool. Well, I think that must be also just fun. Not only, you know, just fun. fun because you get to yeah. kind of um, remove yourself from reality and study right. these characters and, you know, being able to be a channel also to represent them in the most authentic form as an actor. So yeah. I can imagine that's pretty um, challenging and at the same time very rewarding when you nail it. You know, right. I know I hear a lot of people that have done acting and mm -hmm. I volunteer at the Arte de la Luna and I see the actors go in and out of stage and there's some nights where they just feel like they nailed it, you know, right. and it's not just for their ego, but it's really right. to honor the part and the role that they play. Absolutely. Yeah. And one thing about acting is that it makes me a better filmmaker because, you know, I'm looking at the totality of the process. You know, so I look at it from a writer's perspective, I look at it from an actor's perspective, and I know that for actors, you need to give them that breathing room to breathe life into the character. So, so it's improved my craft as a director, it's improved my craft as a writer, because I'm now, you know, more conscious of that. Whereas before, I was um, more focused on you know, telling a good story, but now I'm thinking about, you know, how well-rounded the story will be from different perspectives. So, Shawande, we um, have talked so much about your craft. We talked about your passion and your pursuit of happiness through your acting and your filmmaking. We talked about mentorship. Um, what we haven't talked about is what inspires and motivates you in life, you know, I know you have a beautiful family, you have a child who is also very beautiful, dynamic, he has special needs. Um, what gets you going every morning to continue to do what you love, knowing that it's for the greater good of everyone in your life? I think it's very important now as a, as a parent and, you know, and just a father figure to others to be you know, honest and authentic in telling the story, um, to be an inspiration to others, to give back through this craft, because this this medium, this 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 entertainment industry, this business of filmmaking, you know, touches on every profession from the janitor to the executive producer. You know, being successful in this will allow me to help employ others to fulfill their dream um, while I'm fulfilling mine. And it's important now, I'm at the stage of my life where legacy is important. You know, what you leave behind as a legacy. What, you know, will, will my son be proud or ashamed of the work that his dad has done? is left behind. So that's what's important. That's my, you know, my child is, is, is my motivation. You know, my family and providing a security for them financially. So. And what, what final thoughts and words would you like to share with uh, those watching that are interested in pursuing acting, or not just acting, but interested in pursuing the um, roles that the entertainment industry might provide for them? Um, or want to tell stories in their own way. Maybe it's through film, maybe it's through photography. Just the creative way of expressing yourself. How um, can they live a life that you're living? You know, there's ups and downs, of course, mm -hmm. but you're happy yeah. and you're at peace. Yeah. And so what would you like to say to them? Um, I'll re repeat it. Just follow your passion. Be honest about what you can do and where you are right now in life. Don't let anyone discourage you, throw you off your path. Follow that path. Don't make excuses for yourself. You know, there'll be enough, <laughs> there'll be enough forces in the world that will make excuses for you not to do it. But when you start to follow your passion and you start to follow that light, and people, and, and that light is reflected around the people who surround you, you'll, you know, they'll realize and you will realize that you're doing the right thing because gifts come when you follow your, when you follow your passion and when you're, and when you're directed on that path. And, you know, those gifts 
will just help to bring you to that destination even even faster. You'll you you will find yourself attracting yourself to people who can help you to achieve that goal. And they're like-minded people. And what you'll also find is that the negative people will begin to just fall away from your life, little by little. And that's just the natural evolution of a, attaining peace and joy and happiness. And you got to appreciate the journey, appreciate where you are right now. And that's going to be a struggle because, you know, forces will just, you know, they, they, can, they can overwhelm you. But you just have to stay focused and keep on keeping on. It's bottom line. How can people find more information about you? How can they access you? How can they have a conversation with you? Where do they go to find out more I'm about you? All over the social media, Facebook, YouTube, IMDB, Twitter, S-O-W-A-N-D-E, first name, last name, T-I-C-H-A-W-O-N-N-A. Google that and you can you can find me. But I'm on Facebook. I'm the only Shawande Tachana on Facebook. So that's a way. LinkedIn, same thing. Um, I have my site, racemantelepictures.com, and that's Raceman Telepictures, T E L L A Pictures dot com. Um, we're updating the web the website, but there's still plenty of information that you can get on on me and my projects. Right. Thank you for being here. Okay. Thank you for sharing with my audience and viewers and listeners. Um, you know, it's so it's it's so powerful to know that someone is not just wanting to be something, they're being it. Yeah. Not desiring to be something, they're actually taking the steps to do it. Um, taking the chance, it's a big chance. It's a, a big risk to uh, follow your truest passions, knowing sometimes that not everybody understands um, if you're gonna make it, you know, with paying bills and things like that. But mm -hmm. I really admire you, I admire your work. Um, you. I'm grateful to have you in my life as an inspiration to me as well. And, and you inspire me as well. And I really want you to continue doing what you're doing. Keep us posted on your projects. Love to have you come back because I know that you're working on some things behind the scenes that you didn't want to share today. But I'm really <laughs> rooting for you. And um, when that does come through, because I know it will, I want you to come back and talk about it, okay? Absolutely. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Okay. See you next time on Tea with Molly.